Hello, West Ham Network. It's Holly and it's time for your Hammers Headlines run in association with the brilliant KUMB.com guys. Let's go. For your first story, West Ham are reportedly continuing to work on a deal for Man City defender Taylor Harwood-Bellis, according to Jacob Steinberg. But, of course, we aren't the only ones in the race for the talented 21-year-old. Both Fulham and Leeds United are said to be competing with us for his signature, which is bound to make things a little bit more complicated. He is highly sought after, having captained England under-21s to European glory over the summer, and after being on loan at Burnley, where he was also part of the team that got promoted there. And with only one year left of his deal with City, you would hope to get a little bit of a bargain in terms of price for him. However, City are adamant that they will not go below their asking price. In fact, Alan Nixon reported on Patreon that progress has slowed down dramatically because West Ham haven't been willing to drop below the asking price of 15 million. Um, so it definitely sounds as though negotiations are ongoing. Despite being unproven in the Premier League, Howard Bellis looks as though he's at the perfect stage now to step up a level um, and it will kind of be now or never for him. But it could also be argued that 15 million is a lot for a player that could be considered a little bit of a risk. It certainly sounds that now is the time to make a solid move for the defender if he is a key target this window. As so many of us have now been saying, we've got to stop dilly dallying over targets because, as we know, if you wait too long, they will definitely go elsewhere. They won't be waiting for us. And could we see a double City signing with Borges and Harwood Bellis this window? Let us know your thoughts on the defender and whether you think we should pay City's asking price or if we should try and go in with a lower offer or leave it. Up second, West Ham are said to be ready to drop interest in James Ward-Prowse after we had another bid rejected. The Guardian are saying that relegated Southampton want £40 million for the 28-year-old, but there seems to be a standoff in our valuations versus their valuations of the player. And this is because West Ham believe that he is not worth more than £25 million. And given his age, there are certainly reservations around spending a lot of money on him. There's no denying that he would contribute enormously to our set pieces and goals. But let us know what you think in the comments is he worth more than 25 million or should we just draw the line there i know when i asked people on twitter most people said 20 to 25 million would be the limit without feeling that we'd been ripped off for him obviously he would bring good things to our team the problem is every team is aware of the rice money and knows that we do desperately need to sign someone in that position meaning they can play hard to get and increase their asking prices but at what point do you walk away if everybody is doing this to some extent? Could there be a, a way to approach players even that makes them push harder for the move? Because we've seen it happen to us when a player pushes the move because they're desperate to go or because they really feel that there's a good opportunity for them elsewhere. Are we doing enough our end to perhaps convince the players? Could we do more that side? Lots to consider. And it's thought that West Ham could offer Flynn Downs as part of a deal for Ward Prowse, bringing the cost down, but it still will not be cheap, given that he is actually asking for £100,000 a week. And on top of that, his sell-on value is likely to be very low once we've bought him, mainly given his age. Other options still include Zakaria, Edson Alvarez, Paulinha, Conor Gallagher, McTominay, as well as pretty much every other central midfielder in every league on the planet. But it is now being said that West Ham are stopping pushing Steiden's targets on David Moyes as we are wasting precious time disagreeing between my Moyes and Steiden and the board as well, obviously, over potential signings. And that has meant that we haven't concluded any deals. So could this be the start of us at least going in one direction? Because as much as it might be frustrating that Tim Steiden isn't getting any input on the types of players that could really be good for us long term, it's really frustrating that we're also not signing anybody because we have two polar opposite opinions. So could this be the start of us finalising some deals quickly at last? Who knows? And finally, Siri Air Giants Inter are said to be closing in on an agreement with West Ham for our 24-year-old striker, Gianluca Scamacca. We've heard for a while that he's wanted to return to Italy, but this kept being denied, going back and forth on whether or not it was true. However, it certainly looks as though there is a lot of truth behind it now. Inter are now in the race to sign him, following up from their first rejected bid. Fabrizio Romano has said that the next bid will be in the region of 25 million euros from them, and it could include add 
add-ons with an agreement expected to be reached in the coming days with West Ham. So it sounds as though we are happy to let him go um, for that sum of money, which is very interesting. He also said that Skamaka has already accepted joining Inter and that a new round of talks has been scheduled. Again, this makes sense with all the rumours that have been going on for a month or so now that Skamaka wants to return to Italy. Um it also does make you question where he fits into our plans because we know he plays better with a second striker. So sad to see him go, personally, because I felt like there were there was a lot of promise that we could have made the most of. Um, and it would be a shame to see him go because I don't know who else you bring in that would do as well as he could in that position, especially for the amount of money we're going to lose him for versus the amount of money we'd need to spend to replace a like-for-like -like kind of player. But seeing as we paid £35.5 million for him last year, this leaves us with a loss of around £14 million if that bid is accepted at that price. Obviously, that would be really disappointing. Just one year into a five-year deal and having had him injured for most of that year as well. Definitely hasn't gone how we all hoped when we signed him and had very high hopes. But if you'd like to hear a little bit more about the Skameka situation, check out this morning's West Ham Daily so that you can learn a little bit more about what is going on behind the scenes. So... Those are your Hammers headlines for today. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And leave us a comment, of course, to let us know your thoughts on the ongoing transfer fiasco at West Ham. Until next time, have a great one. Thank you for watching and speak soon.